you have Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, please. Hebrews 6, verse 10. And can I have that in the NLT, please? Amen. Ready to get after this. We're still on diligent, diligence. For God, for God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. All this goes back into serving. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by what? For who? Not yourself. See, the gospel is not about you. It's about other people. Amen. Our great desire is that you keep on loving who? Instead of me. I love me some me. That's what some people say. Our great desire is that you keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain, in order to make certain that what you what will come true. Biblical hope is a confident expectation. How many of y'all hoping for something? I'm giving you the keys to your breakthrough. Y'all need to listen to this. And if the body of Christ would listen to this and understand, you'll get your behind off the bench and do something. Amen? See, you wonder why prayers aren't answered and why things aren't working. It's because you've got to make sure that you take your place. Hallelujah. So let me read that one more time. The Bible, not only does it say it's our desire, it puts a clarifier in front of it. It says our great desire is that you keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that you will, that what you hope for will come true. Now check this out too. Then, then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. See, if you're not challenged spiritually, you become spiritually dull. If you don't attend church with regularity where there's an expectation raised up for you, you become spiritually dull. That's the reason why when an opportunity comes to you to minister to anybody, be it children, be it teens, whatever, you should throw your hat in the arena because that will stop you from becoming spiritually dull and indifferent. And indifferent. There's too many people out there that's indifferent. Oh, whatever. You know, don't matter to me. You know? Instead, now look at this, instead you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. So in other words, when you, start, when you follow this progression and you're not becoming spiritually dull, you will start hanging around with people that inherit God's promises. Right. We talked about this last week. Some of you are hanging around the wrong people. Amen. When you're hanging around people that have want nothing to do with the Spirit of God, you don't know how to inherit the promises. Amen? I want to be around people that have a bigger vision than me. That's the reason why Angie and I stepped outside of ourselves and we hooked up with some other ministries that are helping us in this light. But it's up to you to step outside of yourself. See, everybody gets excited about getting people saved. That's the priority. But my issue is this. How do they grow up? Amen. Hey, I'll tell you what. I can... We can say a prayer, that's the prayer of salvation, and I can dunk you in the water. But if there's not a ministry to grow you up in Christ, as soon as that seed is planted in you, what does the Word of God say? Who tries to come and steal it? So there has to be something to bring people up in faith along the way so they can inherit God's promises because of their, because of their watching our faith and our endurance. Amen. People are watching you. People are watching FTC. People drive by it all the time. God put us in a place where you don't have to look hard to find this church. Amen? You don't have to look hard. But when they drive by this place, they can sit there and say to themselves, that is a place that inherits God's promises because of their faith and their endurance. Amen? Amen? God is a God that will bring you along progressively. So we need to understand this in our spirit that it's very important that we remain diligent. 
that we remain diligent. A strong spirit is sustained on a steady diet of God's word. Let me have Matthew 4, 4, please. Matthew 4, 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no quit in this guy. But the scripture told Jesus, no, the scriptures say, people do not, let me have that in New King James, please. Thank you. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, this goes back into discipleship. This goes back to maturing in the things of God. Amen? This the, the, the prayer. The, once you, again, once you, once you receive salvation and in baptism, you need to have more word in you so you can walk in the things of God. And the, that's where we, the fight is lost because we're not equipped. You can go to church in one day and get, you can go in church one day and get saved and get baptized. What happens the next? Amen? We got to go deeper than this. It doesn't, it does not just stay at the cross. It goes on to Pentecost, then it gets better than that. Amen. Glory to God. Let me have 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. Because what we do, the work that we do must be built on the foundation of Christ. But anyone's work, for, if anyone's work which he has built, Christ has built, he will receive a reward. If, it's, if the work is built on a foundation of God, you will receive a reward. Now, one of the things that happens quite often is this. I'm going to come down, Chad. I'm going to have to do double duty or someone can slide over there. We walk around and we talk about rewards all the time. Everywhere you go, you get rewards. As a matter of fact, I was so happy we had a reward because my wife's car runs on premium and gas for us $4 a gallon. Boy, this is the time I wish I had a bad tweet. But one card you don't want is this one. The slacker card. Don't leave home without it. The slacker card. Every time there's something that needs to be done, you always use the slacker card. Come on. I'm too busy. Well, if you're too busy to do anything for God, you definitely need to look at, you need to adjust your schedule. Amen. And we live in a country where everybody's looking for somebody else to do something for them because their needs aren't being met. But you won't find out today that according to the word of God, if you are using the, snacker card, the slacker card, you will end up this way, in poverty. And there's a whole lot of people out there struggling and wondering how they're going to get ends meet because they spend too much time when it comes to the things of God using this card. It works real good on Saturdays. And in the next couple of weeks, it works real good on Sundays, too. But then we wonder why we end up in this. And then you wonder why your church can't pay its bills, your church can't maintain the facility, because everybody in the building is this. Come on. I know this is hard. When you get a word of diligence, you start to understand. You start to raise expectations of yourself. Amen? In life. Diligence is just not something that applies to church. It applies to life, like going to getting to work on time. There's a meeting at the church that starts at 10. You don't show up at 10.05. Huh?
You just keep on saying these famous words. One day I'll get to cleaning up my office. Right? One day, I wish my garage was as clean as so-and-so's. But you use this one. Don't leave home without it. Now, I want everybody to understand that if God, if I'm sharing this word with you, what do you think God's telling me? Same thing. Same thing. So don't look at me all... Don't give, me the, don't, give me the, don't give me the lazy eye like on Five or Goes West. <laughs> those, of you, those of you who don't know, y'all, y'all figure it out. Let me have um, Romans 12, verse 11, please. Romans 12, verse 11. We're still talking about diligence. Diligence will change your life. I find out that if, you, if you're diligent, you don't got time to get in trouble. Don't you remember the time you was a young kid, you just laying around the house not doing nothing, you got yourself in trouble. I remember the times as an adult, it's the weekend, I'm bored. Let's go to a club. You get in trouble. Huh? Oh, well, oh, you get bored. Oh, my girlfriend's out of town. Let me go someplace else. You get bored. You get in trouble. The Bible tells us this. It says, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So we serve the Lord with diligence. Amen? We serve God with diligence. It pays to be diligent. It pays to do the things of God. Let me have Hebrews 10, verse 35. Hebrews 10, verse 35 in the NLT, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many, of you, how many of you don't like lack? I can't stand it. I've been broke before, but I haven't been broke since 1997 because I made a declaration of faith that I'll never be broke another day in my life. You know why? I had to ask my father for $20, and I got a two-hour lecture on 20 bucks. I figured I could have got a part-time job back then for $5 an hour and worked four hours and got the, got the 20 bucks instead of talking to him. Amen? The Word of God says, do, so do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Don't throw away your confident trust in the Lord. Remember, great reward belongs to you. It says, patient endurance is what you lead now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you receive all that he has promised. So when you're patiently, patient endurance is diligence. You have to stay diligent to get the things of God. You have to stay diligent to grow up in the things of God. That's what people need right now because we live in a microwave society in which we think that we can actually just make a declaration of faith and do nothing and think we're going to be blessed. But the Bible, the Bible says we have to be doers of the things of God. Like, for example, in this church, the, I, I, had, I asked Chad and some of the gentlemen, they added an extra row to the, middle, to the middle aisle here. Why? Because I made a declaration of faith in the people here on fire that praying that we have more people start attending church. So my declaration of faith says add seats. Make room for what you're declaring. If not, you're not doing any action towards making room for people. So quite often we are believing for God to move in our finances and we don't sow nothing outside the ordinary. If I'm believing, so we, we, we're believing for God to heal our bodies, but we don't change our declaration in speaking over our bodies. Amen? You need to change something. There has to be an action that's close to what, to what you're believing God for. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The patient endurance is what you need now so that your will will continue to, so that your will will continue to do God's will. Then you receive all that he has promised. Hallelujah. Let me have Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. It is impossible. Let me have that in New King James, please. Hallelujah. 
Those are just memory verses from Bible school. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Who's him? God. God. For he who comes to God must believe two things, that he is, that he is God, and number two, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But a very important place, a very important word comes before that, which will state to the Christian that it's not optional. And that's that word that's before believe. If my mama said, you must be home by this time, or my daddy said, you must be home. When the street lights go dim, you must be here. Not in the process, be here. So he's saying this, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But you must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder. There's another qualifier there. Who does he reward? Those who diligently seek him. This is not a part-time thing. This is something that you should do with regularity. Because remember this, he's a rewarder. Amen? He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And quite often, we're always asking God for what we don't have instead of doing what he tells us to do in his word to get what we need. Amen? See, I'm finding out that we complicated things. Because you, know you know your flesh always makes you complicate things. When your flesh gets involved, it complicates all kinds of things. You, 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 can, be, you can be a woman and be like this, a single woman. He's a steady worker. He loves God. He has plenty of money in the bank. And you, I don't know. But he'd say he's an average looking guy. I don't know. Then all of a sudden, you got Brad Pitt that comes up, can't hold a job, got three kids. Oh, there's something about him that I just love. Because the fil- the, the, it's, the, it's all about that filter. Amen? We need to make sure that say, when you're diligently seeking God, you'll be able to discern what path you need to take. Amen? See, we, always, we don't see things spiritually where flesh gets in the way. There's people who, lo- who leave one job for an extra 50 cents an hour. But the Holy Ghost might be telling you, while you're diligently seeking him, the reward's going to be, hey, I'm going to tell you where you need to go. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. And when he does that, he gives you an instruction. You need to obey him. But I don't like anybody at this job. I'm ready to leave. The Lord be like, stay. You be like, Then you stay there, and next thing you know, the other plant closes down. That's why it's important. He diligently rewards those who seek him. Amen? He's rewarded those who diligently seek him. When I seek, when you, when you, we repeat after me, when I seek God, I seek God. Good, things good things happen to me. Happen to me. When, I God, when I seek God, good things, good things happen, to happen to me. Let's do it one more time. When I seek God, Good things, good things happen to me. Let's put, to me. let's put some stank on it. When I seek God, good things happen to me. So you, that needs to be a confession. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because you know, somehow you start, I'm going I'm to read the word of God, and all of a sudden you'll be like, because <gasps> your flesh be like, uh-uh. That's what you say to yourself. When I seek God, good things happen to me. So God's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So now, we also live in a generation where there's there's those people who are not diligent in seeking God or not diligent in too much of anything. Okay? Let me have Proverbs chapter 19, verse 15. See, you have a choice. The book of Proverbs is always very interesting because you always have a choice. Laziness casts one into deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. There's a lot of people idle right now, right? 
There's a lot of people just sitting around. They got used to not working. But you know what? But you know what? You, but you know what happens when people idle around and they're not working and their kids see that? What do you think happens to the children? They don't want to work. They don't want to work. Amen. This is this this is this is the truth. When people start becoming more reliant on some government entity or something like that to take care of them and their kids see it, that's the reason why there's generational poverty. And this goes across racial lines. Amen. It's a choice. But you've got to make the decision not to be idle. Now let me have Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. You have a choice. Proverbs 10, verse 4. He who has a slack hand becomes poor. But the hand of the diligent makes what? So rich is not a cuss word. Rich is a four-letter word that's not a cuss word. And the, and the body of Christ has let the world tell us what we don't need. Amen? Oh, man, a preacher don't need all that money. That preacher don't need this. The preacher don't need that. What these preachers need all this stuff for? Amen? What does preacher need that for? What does preacher need this for? What do they need all this for? Can I have my picture of the airplane? This blessed my heart. Brother Kenneth Copeland did what? So do, do you think the size of that plane, it might at least cost more than 100000 don't you? That's a multi-million dollar jet. And I know a whole lot of people, and some of y'all were the ones, when the preacher starts believing for a jet, well, they need a jet for. What these preachers need jets for? Well, what does P. Diddy need one for? What does your favorite entertainers need a jet for? Come on. Come on. We know what? Now, now, some of you, would you let somebody use your car to help get somebody out of Afghanistan right now? You'd be like, oh, but no, you'd be like, my car? Shoot, you, man, I got a, I got a 2013. <laughs> I don't want no scratches to get on my car. But this man of God is sending a plane. So that's the reason why our mindsets need to change. Because check this out. If the man of God didn't have a plane, somebody would be stuck. But because God provided the plane to the man of God, he can do this. Amen? So you need to change your mindset on what you think preachers should have. That's the one thing that I find out by being, around, being here in a more of a rural area. Our perspective on what God needs to do needs to get bigger. And the expectation that the minister puts upon the people is this. There's nothing wrong with being prosperous. Well, that church talks about money. Yeah, that's why we pay our bills. That's why the parking lot doesn't have potholes in it. This is for free. Amen. Let's go back to the scriptures again, please. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. I'm having fun with this. I, I couldn't wait to arm that one. I was so happy when I saw that. Because guess what? I'm going to have one these days. You better believe it. God can do for them, he can do for me. Amen. He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Remember, it's not bad to be rich. It's not, there's nothing wrong with being rich. Amen? See, I tell you what, if I was a young parent, I'd be striving to have, I'd be striving to have resources. I wouldn't have to put my kids in these public schools. Oh, guess who's going to read to you today? Josie Transvestite. Just saying. All this stuff is free. Yeah, come at me, man. Come at me. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. See, there's nothing wrong with having resources. There's nothing wrong with having money. But let me have 
Okay, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty. Don't be walking around with your nose sticking up. Nor trust in your money. Amen. Nor trust in your money. But trust in God who does what? Let's read that again. God who does trust in the living God who does what? Okay, so next time you got one of your friends that's got a problem with someone talking about needs being met in prosperity, you're armed with some scripture. God gives richly. What things? And I don't know what. Your all is different than my all. Amen? Sam's all was a gold wing, so now he's part of the wild hogs. <laughs> Amen? May I Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24? Proverbs 12, verse 24. See, for me, the hand, the hand of the diligent will rule. But the lazy man will be put into forced labor. The people who work hard, they're the ones in charge. Amen? The one, that, the one that's walking around with the slacker card. There's extra detail on the job. Slacker card. He ends up being forced into labor. Let, let, me, let me have that in the, new, in the NLT, please. See, I want to be free. Amen? Hallelujah. Work hard, become a leader. Be lazy, become a slave. And, and not being a slave to somebody, but being a slave to the system. I'm not, not going to be a slave to this system. You know what the system does? The system trades your work an hour for your dollar. You need to be sitting at home making money when you're not doing anything. Amen. Amen. And I have to teach this stuff to people who work for me. Oh, we have this thing called a 401k. They'll give you, if you give up to 4%, they'll match everything you put in. That's free money. Well, I don't want to do that. Wait a minute. Free money. Some places they match that thing up to 10% or something like that. And you complain about a raise? Give yourself a raise. Pay yourself first, and they'll go ahead and give you another 10. But again, it's that poverty mentality. Money needs to work for you. You don't work for money. Amen? Hallelujah. You don't want to be a slave to the system. This means that the system has you hemmed up in life. And look at what, look what's happening to people in this country right now. They're hemmed in. They don't feel they have no place to go, so we keep on just tolerating different things. Amen? But you don't have to stay. You say, if, if you don't choose what you want, you're going to have to stay with what you get. If you don't choose what you want, you have to stay with what you get. I'm going to make a choice that my life's going to be different. Amen? Look here, the system says this, you retire at age what? 65, life expectancy is what? 78, 80 years old, so you work hard, and then you got 13 years and you kick the bucket? No, that's the world system. So you retire when you're older. You, a lot of us, you got to keep your body. Amen, you got to keep your body. You can't be snacking on gummy bears all the time. So, you, so when you're diligent, God will speak to you and tell you the things to do to get you where you need to be. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I, I am freeing myself from punching that clock, even though theoretically I don't punch a clock. I'm freeing myself to do that. And I have to do that by being diligent by being diligent. My hand must be diligent in the things of God. Amen? Hallelujah. The diligent man, I got to give me use that scripture real quick here. Let, let me have, let me have Proverbs 12, 22, verse 29. Proverbs 22, verse 29. You guys okay with this? Hallelujah. 
Do you see any truly competent workers? They will serve kings rather than working for ordinary people. When you're diligent, God will put you around other people that are diligent. And I've been blessed to see that now. I still find it amazing that the people that, I'm, that, I, that I've been around in ministry now, that I see that even though they may be in their 60s or 70 or 80 years old, they're preaching four times a week. And we got people that barely can preach one day a week here. It's diligence. Well, people don't come to church on that day. Well, so the God, so the God tell Noah, since everybody's not getting in the boat, quit pre preaching righteousness. Come on now. Stay with me. See, when you're diligent, you'll start working shoulder to shoulder with extraordinary people. Brother Keith always says this. You got to get around people that have a bigger vision than you do. And I remember one time at one meeting, Angie, remember the time we're sitting and we're, and we're eating dinner with somebody at the, end of the, at the end of the meeting, and a guy sat there and he's telling me, he said, why don't you just get a plane? He talked to me like, why don't you get a plane, just like going out and buy a new car. <laughs> then he said, we have one, and my wife's a pilot too. Now, it's not, he, then he says, don't get it wrong. It's not some really fancy plane. This, ours can only go like 300 miles an hour. But, but we live in Missouri, and our family's in, in Houston, so I have the ability to go spend a day with my family in Houston and, and fly back. Isn't that awesome? Amen. So I'm just like, this dude just said get a plane just like going out and getting a Chevy. His vision's bigger than mine. Okay. And being diligent, God will give you the tools that you need to be the man or the woman that you dream to be. And he's also going to give you the, the goals that you need to be able to achieve it. I get tired of people telling me what their dreams are. But tell me their dreams but not having any goals towards it. If you have a dream of becoming this, what are your goals towards becoming that? If you don't have any goals or any, or any points to hit in between or short-term goals to hit in between that, you just have a wish. And it, is wishing faith? Then, how, then that's the reason why it don't happen. That's the reason why it does not happen. We say these big things that we want to do, but there's nothing actionable that you're doing to get to that. Because you know why? Most goals are contrary to your, to your flesh. I had somebody the other day tell me, Brian, I wish I could exercise more. I used to go to a gym. And I said, let me tell you something, bro. You watch TV? He said, yeah, too much of it. Every 15 minutes, do 10 push-ups. Then go back and watch TV. Then by the time you get to the 30 minutes, do 20 squats. No weights, 20 squats. Then go back and sit down. At the 45, at the 45 mark, do a couple of jumping jacks. What are you doing? You're sitting down, watching TV. You can do this even with a bag of popcorn sitting next to you. Come on, I'm trying to help you. Because you know what? This is how I stay in shape. This is how I condition myself. I don't have some uh, allotted time where I, I do this in, in the gym and all this stuff like that. No. If I'm watching something or I'm studying something every 15 minutes, I take a break and I'll do that. Then in the morning while you're downstairs in the basement iron, guess what? I got a chin-up bar down there too. So you do some chin-ups. If you want it, you will be diligent to get it. This is how this works. Diligence is contrary to your faith. Now I got to work on what I eat. Because I love me some sweets. Don't put a snickle doodle in front of my face. My wife made them. What them caramel, what them things called? 
Yeah, Scotcheroo, you better not make another Scotcheroo. <laughs> she made this big old plate of these things. Man, I ate one of them. I'm like, oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> They'll be good for my glorified body, but not so good for the body I got now. They're good, though. But being diligent, we need to make sure that we add that. You got to be diligent in your study. You got to be diligent in your commitment. If you, if you have an investment plan, you have to be diligent to that. We'll drop a hundred bucks at we'll drop a hundred bucks at Texas Roadhouse, but we can't save a hundred dollars. Makes no sense at all to me. There's people in churches all across America who will drop a twenty spot in the offering plate and want the windows of heaven to open up before them, but then go out to Red Lobster or go out no these days go to McDonald's and buy four Happy Meals for your family. That's going to cost you thirty bucks. I'd rather buy bologna and cheese, sow the extra money into the kingdom of God, instead of sow money in the septic tank. <laughs> you got a choice. Either you sow and seed into the kingdom that will bring forth a harvest, or you sow into the septic. And this right here, sowing the seed into the kingdom will give you increase and you'll be blessed. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, sit together, run it over. And here, give, and you have to wash, wipe your behind. I know this, this is the truth, because this is why people live in poverty. And they wonder how come their needs aren't being met. Pastor, you're kind of off the hook. Yeah, I know. And I ain't putting myself back on the hook either. Amen. Diligence refers to being careful, persistent, and determined in action. To achieve, to achieve a definite purpose. Let me have John 4, verse 34. John 4, verse 34. We're getting somewhere here, folks. Jesus was diligent. Jesus said this, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me from fit, and from finishing his work. Matter of fact, let me have that New King James. God said, Jesus said his food, he sustained by fulfilling what God called him to do. That's how diligent Jesus was. Jesus was diligent to, to do the whole job that the Lord called, that the Father called him to do. Amen? So when we're diligent, God will, the, the, God will speak to our, uh, our hearts and say, we have to complete the project. Jesus said he's going to complete the will of God. So over here, if I ever say I'm going to do something to this place, there ain't a demon in hell that's going to stop me. Amen? And whatever we say we're going to do here, we're going to do it. Because there's no, I'm a finisher. I'm a closer. I'm not somebody that's just giving somebody something pie in the sky and it's not happening. That's not in my DNA. I will see it, then I'll go like this. Jesus, you got to build. We need this. Jesus, you got to build. Oh, the roof's leaking. Jesus, you got to build. Oh, the HVAC needs to be placed back in the back. Jesus, you got to build. The parking lot needs to be done. Jesus, you got to build. Oh, by the way, we need to put in all these windows? Yeah. Because you paint them, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. <laughs> but that's outside the budget. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. We got that. Amen? Hallelujah. Stay with me now. Good thing, thank God that Jesus completed his work. Amen? If he hadn't completed, there wouldn't be no salvation. Because that tells us that your flesh will tell you, will give you all the time in the world to stop. Amen? One thing I've learned is this. I quit telling myself I'm tired. If you keep on saying that you're tired, guess what you're going to be? If you keep saying that you don't have any time, guess what you're not going to have? Time. Just shut your hole. For real. Just be quiet and grind. Amen? Hallelujah. We have to understand that God wants us to be to be finishers. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to make sure that we are diligent 
in doing the work that God has called us to. And we got a prayer group that comes in here on Friday. See, I come in here just to wash my hands and use the bathroom to water some plants. And I'd be getting stuck in here sometimes. <laughs> but they're diligent. They're diligent in what they're doing. And I believe that, the, that everything starts with the foundation of prayer. Amen? Prayer is necessary. And also, when people are praying like this, when you got Holy Ghost praying going on, it's a better level. Because your natural man, your natural man will be talking about stuff that you, you think you need, but Holy Ghost will say, no, they don't need that, they need this. Amen. Come in here, man. Oh, wait. Jeff be blowing that, be blowing that so far, man. Oh, you came in, you came in here with, <laughs> and we're doing one of those. And she walked in, and I have, after I had that word, my eyes was all teary and stuff like that. She was looking at me like, Jess was like, what's going on? When you came in here, you was like, because it's a different feel. It's a different feel. And it's so, and it's so funny, we had, we had a prayer again. It's about, fi about fi financial breakthrough, right? And I said, Jeff, get that shofar. He blew that thing like satchmo. <laughs> And, we, and, and as he's blowing it, as he's blowing it, Dana's walking around and she opens the door and there's someone coming in with cash in the envelope. Okay, let me get down here so y'all can see me. Tell her. Did y'all hear what I just said? The Spirit of God said, blow the horn and bring it in. And while he's blowing the horn, somebody comes in here with an envelope. Okay, let me say that again. <laughs> now, now, see, we, and it wasn't with, it, 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 it was not with 50 bucks, okay? It was a thick envelope. Oh, <laughs> I just, I'm just on my way to work, and, and I just, your place looks lovely, and, and I just wanted to give you this, and, and this is the cash I had on me. Amen. That's like, wow. Jimmy John's? <laughs> <laughs> Gave me a hug and said, okay, now, Pastor, I got to go back. I got to go to work now. Well, bless God. Amen. 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 So, so this is this for what I'm believing God for. Every day I go to my mailbox with an expectation. Amen. With an expectation. It's not just what I have in my hand. It's what the angels can bring in. Right. This is free. So Jesus said. Jesus said. He wants to be diligent. He had to finish the job. So diligent people are finishers, but they persevere to transform a vision into reality. Amen? Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. There's water here. So I pray that as you receive this word on diligence, that it will stir you up to be diligent. Let me give you, give you some examples. For, for, for myself personally, I have an office in my house, and I know my wife could probably admit that it's a lot neater lately, isn't it? Why? Because I'm not going to leave it a mess. Amen. Diligence touch, touches my line. My slippers go in the same place every, every night before I get up, before I go to sleep. I'm not just throwing this stuff all over the place. Diligence touches every aspect of your life. I'm not, I'm not allowing junk to just stay in my car too long. That's not being diligent. That's not being respectful. Amen? Amen. And your children will start to see diligence. All right? Now let's talk about some of the rewards of diligence. Hallelujah. 
Let me have um, 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7. Hallelujah. Man. Then we're gonna have, I'm going to give you a little story, then we'll get you out of here. Amen. Let me get my other little. See, this right here is the theft that happens extra. I'll say 2 Chronicles 15, verse 7. Amen. For the word of God says this, be strong and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Every time I serve God, I'm going to work because God's a rewarder. I love God's rewards plan. Amen. Amen. Let, me have, let me have Psalms. Let me have Psalms 19. Verse 9, please. Psalms 19, verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than gold, yea, must in fine gold, sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servants warn, in keeping them there is great reward. When you keep and you're diligent in keeping God's word, there's a reward for it. There's no days off. God's word's going to be, sometimes when God, when God tells you something that's contrary to your flesh, there's a reward for it. Amen? God's very specific in his directions. So now let me share, you, let me share a story with you about someone that was diligent and was rewarded. And her life started out as a sad note. In the word of God, there's a young lady by the name of Ruth. Ruth's mother-in-law's name was Naomi. And the story starts with Naomi had two sons, and both of those sons were killed. And Ruth was one of the, the Ruth and Orphrah was her, was, was, the other, the sister that was married to, to two girls. So this is a pretty bad situation, isn't it? Amen? But Ruth made a decision. She made a decision by the Spirit of God to say, while the other sister went, to, went back to their gods, she made a declaration of faith by, by staying with the true God. Amen? And in serving the true God, a decision was made by her. Sometimes when bad stuff happens to people, we spend a whole lot of time asking God why instead of remaining diligent. When crisis comes, stay diligent. When a bad situation happens, stay diligent. The body of Christ should be diligently praying for this country, not diligently complaining about this country. Amen. Amen. Amen? Diligently praying. When those soldiers over there lost their lives serving this country, and I looked at their ages, they were anywhere from 20 to 25 years old. We have to be a church that diligently prays for its armed forces. We have to be diligently praying for the leadership. There's evil out there. Amen? And these are, this is the stuff that happens when, when, a, when, when you get an unction to pray in the middle of the night, you might be praying for someone's protection. I remember when Tom was over there, man, he, he was waking me up at 4 o'clock in the morning quite often. Well, what, what, what's going on over there, Lord? You don't need to know, but you need to pray. Amen. See, sometimes we spend more time. We need to know. You don't need to know. Amen. You just need to pray. And when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, say, oh, somebody, these shot I got on my Sunday. That gives power to that prayer. Yes. The prayer wasn't for him. Oh, this blessing, Lord, he's already blessed. He's got penny. Amen? 
You have already prayed for a hedge of protection. That's Psalm 91. But there's some things you don't know that the Spirit of God gives you utterance. Amen? Amen. So Ruth is in a situation where she's got to make a choice. Either she goes back into the world or she stays in the kingdom of God. And there's a lot of people when a crisis comes, they want to go back into the world instead of staying on the Lord's side. I had, this, I had this discussion with my mom this week as she's sitting in her house wearing a mask on her face. It's that, it's that box that people keep on watching. Man, turn the box on something else, man. Watch swamp people. Shoot them, shoot them, shoot them. Watch something. <laughs> Watch HGTV. No, I want an open concept. As everybody say, I want an open concept home. Oh, it costs that much to do it. I don't want an open concept. Yeah. There's a whole lot of things you can put inside your mind, but my mom's mind is being inundated with this stuff. She calls news, and she's fearful in her house wearing a mask. But being me, I'm her son. I ain't about to front on her. I mean, um, Call her out or be disrespectful to her. She can do whatever she want to do. Because I, look, look, life is short. I'm not going to get in an argument with my, with my mom about this kind of stuff. Amen? I'm going to love on her. Okay, mom, you stay in the house. You, 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 you do your thing. If that makes you feel comfortable, if you got your faith in that, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But I love you. Stay safe, baby boy. Okay. <laughs> going back up. Ruth chose to stay. She chose God, chose the God of Israel. And Ruth's vow, let, let me have, let me have um, Ruth 1, verse 15. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ruth is also refer, referred to this whole book as the Moabitess girl. So in other words, she's a girl from the other side of the tracks. Amen. She said, look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me not. I use this in weddings sometimes. Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. Wherever you go, I'll go. Wherever you lodge, I'll lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. She's making a vow that she's going to stay with the going to stay with the God of Israel. Amen. But what this tells me is this. While you're, while you're working and while you're getting yourself through some problems that may be difficult, there's something called divine joinings. There's divine relationships. Amen. There's divine relationships that happen. And oftentimes we spend a lot of time complaining about our situation instead of looking at who God is putting in who God is putting in our place. Amen. Who God who is God putting in front of me to help me get through this get through this situation. Amen. There are divine joinings. So Ruth has been divinely joined to Naomi. Amen. Been divinely joined to Naomi. All right, that's what I wanted to leave right there, verse 14. All right, so now let's keep on going. Let's go to Ruth 2, verse 2. Ruth 2, verse 2. So Ruth didn't want to go on Social Security. Ruth didn't want to go on welfare. Amen? Amen. You know what Ruth did? She worked. So Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Please let me go into the field and glean the heads of grain after him, after him in whose sight I might find favor. And she, and she said to her, go, my daughter. And she left and went in the field and gleaned after the reapers. And, at, and after she happened to come to part of a field belonging to Boaz, who was, a, who was in the family of Imelech, and behold, now Boaz came to Bethlehem and said to the and said to his reapers, the Lord be with you. 
And they answered him, the Lord bless you. If, if Ruth wasn't working, if Ruth wasn't afraid to get her fingers dirty, amen? See, it's just not going to drop in your lap. You're going to be diligent, right? So Boaz had the field that she was working in. And so, as he's, and so the servant who was in charge, so he said, so Boaz is like this. Who's shorty over there? She's in there just picking up the leftovers. And he's like, well, who's that? Who's, who's young? Matter of fact, he's saying to himself, who does she belong to? Because he's like, hey, I'm interested. So the servant who's in charge answered, said, it's the young Moabite woman again. She has no business. She, 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 has, no, she has no place there. But because she's with her, with her mother-in-law, she has a place. And God will have a, God will give you a place with who you are fellowshipping with. That's why it's important that you watch who you hang around. Her, the other, the other daughter-in-law went someplace else, but here she is being in position to receive the promise. It's the young Moabite woman who came, with, who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And she said, please let me glean and gather after the reaper, reapers among the sheaves. So she came and continued. She came and has continued from what? To win. So in other words, she's been working. She's not sitting around going, well, my man going to come. I'm going to sit around the house and make sure I just get my nails done and get my eyelashes done and look pretty. Then that man see you be like, wait a minute, her fingernails are done, her eyelashes are done, her hair looks nice, and she ain't working? Who's paying? Come on now. Who's paying for it? Who's paying for it? And do I want any of that? I'm trying to help somebody. It's not just y'all in the building. It's the people who are watching. Because somebody might be watching this a year down the road. Because we always, we always judge stuff just based on that cover. But I tell you what, when you out there just gleaning, you're not out there looking sweet. You sweaty. Your hands are dirty. But that man's looking and saying, boy, I don't know what I tell you what, but you wipe her face off and everything else, show be fine. <laughs> so she came and has continued from morning to now, though she rested a little in the house. So in other words, should have to be something about Ruth because even the guys that are working to fit with her are like, that girl working hard. They're noticing something different. See, diligence separates itself from the rest of the herd. Amen? Amen? Diligence separates. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you listen, my daughter. Will you not do not glean? Will, will you not do not glean in another field nor go here or there? but stay close to my, to my young women. So boys like this, hold on a second here. I don't want you to go anyplace else. I want to keep you in a fence. Amen, because I'm keeping my eyes on you, right? It's like when I first met Angie. You know, you first meet somebody, you always call them all the time, what you doing? Same thing I, you did and I called me, you called me an hour ago. Oh, I don't know, I was just checking. Just thinking about you, trying to keep that fence in. Right? Two hours later, when you get off work, I told you that, I told you the last time you called me. Keeping that fence in there. <laughs> no, when I first met her, she was driving my car because I was hiding it. Because I wasn't diligent, I was just spending my money. See, he wants to let you know. God can't steer a parked car. You want God to bless you and you just stay in stationary? He can't steer a parked car. You got to start to move and do something. See, deal just makes you move one way or another. Amen? Okay, I'm finishing this. I'm finishing this up. He 
He saw her. He kept his eye on her. Amen. And then it, then it came down to, let me get to the end. It came down to Boaz was her redeemer. Amen. Boaz was, Boaz was her redeemer. And the word of God is quite simple. Boaz in this whole story is a type of Christ. He's a bridegroom from Bethlehem. because That's where they're gleaning at. And Ruth is the church, the undeserving bride. Amen. So Boaz is going to redeem Ruth because of Ruth's diligence. Now, I'm going to read something to you. Let me have, um, let me have Ruth 4, verse 13. Let me have that in the, I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, Ruth 4, verse 13. Let me have that in the in a NLT. Wrap this story up. It's 11.55. I know y'all got meatloaf. You got your, you got your brisket you were working on. If it's Tom's beans, they work every bit of time. So this is the end. So Boaz took Ruth home, and she became his wife. Why? Because she was diligent. So you know what? When you're diligent, you're in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. When you're lazy, you're in the wrong place doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. That's how you get caught. When I was a little kid, never I just busy. Whenever you sit around, I'm bored. You know, when that word's come out your mouth, you're just setting yourself up for trouble. I'm bored. Boss took her home, she became his wife. And when he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant, and she gave birth to a son. Then the women in the town said to, Na said to Naomi, praise the Lord who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age, for he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has, and has been better to you than seven sons. Naomi took the baby and cuddled him to her breast, and she cared for him as if he were her own. The neighbor woman said, now at last, Naomi has a son again, and they named him Obed. And he became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. And this is a genealogical record of their ancestor, Perez. Perez, who's the breaker, was the father, was the father of Hezron, and Hezron was the father of Ram, and Ram was the father of Abinadab, and Abinadab was the father of Nashon, and Nashon was the father of Salmon, and Salmon was the father of Boaz, and Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of David. And we all know that the lineage of Christ came through that line. Amen. So it came, from a, it came through from a woman of God being diligent in the middle of an awful circumstance. But God had her in the right place at the right time doing the right thing because she was diligent in her service and in her commitment to him. Amen? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you have blessed us with this word of diligence. That I know and I speak for myself that when my time is redeemed, I won't spend my time just being I just sitting idly around doing anything. I pray that this house of God becomes kingdom minded. Amen. And that when we have the time to serve you and the time to study your word, that that's what we will do. That we will shut off the TV and study the word of God. That we will be thinking about serving you first instead of serving ourselves. And I just thank you right now for that word upon us in Jesus' name. May God bless you and keep you in all